We've got three big MCU movies coming out in 2019, but beyond that, it's a bit of a mystery. Yet rumbling around town suggests that the next big new MCU franchise to launch just might be The Eternals. Really? The Eternals? That just might be the case. We seem to think that the evidence is showing very strongly that that's going to happen. We're taking a look, and that's coming up next on Hero Journalism. Hello, heroes. I'm your host, 4K, and today we're taking a look at the curious case of the Eternals movie. Earlier this year, when I first heard that Marvel Studios was developing the Eternals to be one of its next movies, I was frankly a bit shocked. Uh, back when I first started collecting comics as a kid in the 80s, I don't even think any of my uh, comic book collecting friends knew who the Eternals were. The only reason why I knew is because one of my first comics given to me by a family friend just happened to be Iron Man Annual Number 6, which dealt with the Eternals, but I can tell you kind of went over my head at age 11. Uh, so I was a little surprised that uh, this far into the Marvel Studios were already getting to what we would call the, the fringe areas. But there are a few things I noticed that seem to indicate that this very likely might be the case that they're moving in, and so I thought we'd take a look at that today. First off, it's got a hell of a pedigree. It's a Kirby creation. Yes, Jack Kirby created the Eternals back in 1978, these were uh, allegedly some concepts that he had been planning on including in his New Gods work at DC and ended up not doing those because he was falling out with DC, left them to return back to Marvel. Ironic, since the New Gods were originally going to be Marvel characters, uh, and then he fell out with Marvel and went to DC and used them there. So a little bit ironic there, uh, but anything that's a Kirby creation has a certain amount of, of artistic merit and interest that's going to be uh, worth looking at. Um, but still, the uh, property has not had a very good publishing run uh, since Kirby left the characters. It's been a little bit spotty. Only a few mini-series over the next few decades. Um, uh, a couple ongoing uh, titles that didn't last too long. Uh, Neil Gaiman kind of uh, uh, reinvented the characters in the 2000s. Um, uh, so that, that is obviously something that they might be drawing from. Obviously, he's one of the great writers of co modern comic book history. So right there, you've got a little bit. Still, they, they're not a central core character to the Marvel Universe, or certainly never really was in the comics that I read. Um, but you can see how there, there's some room to explore the material. Uh, another thing that really makes this uh, interesting is that Marvel has really taken a different tact recently, the last few years, uh, in how they approach announcing their movies. The phase announcements are, are gone, and so the crazy thing to consider is, is that we've got three Marvel movie slots uh, in 2020, and we don't know what any of those are. One of those movie slots is literally only barely over a year away from now. And so we know that they have to have these movies in development. It's just very strange that they went from uh, uh, holding, from giving so much information to now holding it back so closely to the movie's release date. So they're clearly working on something we don't know about. However, the two things we know that they're developing that aren't confirmed for movies, but they are in active development, are a Black Widow solo movie spinoff and The Eternals. And when we try to gauge how credible or how far along in development those projects are, one thing you have to look at is who the talent is that they've hired. Uh, they obviously haven't gotten into the stage of casting for Eternals, so that's a, a strike against it being too far along. With Scarlett Johansson, obviously that's pre-cast for the lead, and you could keep uh, uh, supporting characters and villains uh, on the down low for a little while. Um, but uh, more importantly, uh, they have hired directors. They've hired directors for both of those films. For The Eternals, they've hired Chloe Zhao. Um, never heard of her. You probably haven't either. She's made two feature-length movies in 2008-2012. Um, indie movies, uh, very uh, uh, not widely known movies. I've never uh, heard of them before this announcement. Um, but that the fact that they have a director attached and the fact that we're so close to 2020 as far as movie production timelines would require, 
that is certainly a, a, a key indication that this might be one of the next movies. But everybody knows that, or at least a lot of people who've been really following uh, MCU closely do. The, the, the final thing that I thought was a real uh, strike in the favor of Eternals being one of the near upcoming MCU movies is the fact that if you look at how uh, Marvel compares to DC, and I love that comparison, I love the, the, the rivalry, the fight between them two. Um, unfortunately for DC, Marvel has pretty much beaten them on just about every metric you can imagine for, um, for the live action movie adaptations. Not on every case, and it doesn't mean that DC hasn't, and Warner Brothers hasn't put out uh, some decent movies, but obviously I don't need to go movie by movie to uh, indicate that uh, there's been a lot of rough waters uh, along the way there, and a lot of movies that have not succeeded on the very least financially, let alone critically. However, there's a couple areas that DC really has kind of beaten Marvel. Uh, one is uh, the first, uh, being the first to bring a female superhero to the screens with Wonder Woman. Um, of course, Marvel is answering with Captain Marvel in just a few months. Um, but another thing uh, that DC and Warner Brothers have done that Marvel didn't was they brought Aquaman to the screens. And... Aquaman being a bit of an analog to uh, Marvel's Submariner. In fact, in a way, you can even argue that for DC, it was a harder task to bring Aquaman to the screens because Aquaman has had such a poor reputation uh, over the years as being the weakest member of the Justice League, etc., etc. Not deservedly so, but regardless, that's public perception. So uh, when you're making a giant uh, $300 million movie, public perception is very important. That can uh, uh, lead to a really good opening weekend or a bad opening weekend. So uh, in a way, you could say that their challenges would have been greater than a Namor Submariner movie by Marvel. Um, of course, Marvel uh, may, part of the issue may be that their rights to Namor are still tied up with Universal, um, so that might be what's slowing the process there. Who knows? Uh, they, they've said that they've been developing it for many years now, but they just couldn't make it happen. DC and Warner Brothers, they made it happen, and the movie has been so far a pretty big hit. So that's one area where uh, you see these similar characters, and uh, uh, DC just, or excuse me, DC made it happen, and Marvel actually couldn't. Um, so when I look at the Eternals and I start thinking about, you know, what they represent, what types of characters and stories this would bring to the MCU, suddenly I was reminded that one of the uh, millions of projects that Warner Brothers has announced with DC pro uh, properties is the New Gods. And allegedly, they're pretty serious about the production. It's still in development, even though they've been adding and yanking movies off of their production slate, you know, just in a manic, uh, uh, a manic way. And despite many films being pulled off of Warner Brothers' production slate recently, The New Gods still apparently seems to be in development. And they do actively have a director attached to the project. Uh, Ava DuVarney is developing it with Warner Brothers. She, of course, directed, uh, I believe, Selma, and then uh, most recently the Wrinkle in Time movie. Of course, that underperformed at the box office, which might have slowed her, or, or, or ate into her clout, slowed that project down. But still, as far as we know, it's being actively developed. And the fact that New Gods is a little bit separate from the the main superheroes of the DCEU means even if they're going to reboot that, as we've heard recently, uh, kick out the uh, Henry Cavill and uh, uh, Ben Affleck uh, versions of their characters and start anew, um, you would think that the New Gods movie would be able to uh, continue as is without being affected by that because the characters are off on a different planet. Um, it wouldn't really... Changes to the current DCEU really shouldn't affect the script for a New Gods film. So it would make sense that even though the primary superheroes for DCEU are going through a lot of tumult right now, that New Gods would be able to continue without having that affect that property. So in thinking about that, I suddenly realized, you know, 
as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that pedigree, that Jack Kirby pedigree, uh, the new gods were uh, ideas of stories and characters Kirby had while he was working on Thor. And uh, he decided, because of the way Marvel was treating him, to hold those characters back, not give those characters to Marvel for free, which basically, uh, uh, in a way, is how all the characters he created was, were given to Marvel. So he held those back, and when he made the leap from uh, Marvel to DC, he introduced the new gods there, and then uh, uh, when he fell out with them came back to Marvel and created the Eternals. So it, with that pedigree, uh, in the connection to uh, uh, the New Gods film, suddenly it, it realized to me that there's, there's a lot of similar thematic material that they would be mining. And this might be one case where Marvel would see some value in beating DC to the punch. They just got beaten to the punch uh, by Aquaman, previously by Wonder Woman, and now... Uh, uh, Especially since The New Gods, while it's uh, also a little bit of a fringe property for DC, not the most well-known, not as mainstream as their normal heroes, um, it's still more well-known than The Eternals. The Eternals are fairly un not well-known uh, by uh, uh, even Marvel Comics collectors. So the fact that you would have a Eternals film come late after the new gods would would certainly add to the challenge uh, make it feel a little bit more like a rip off of the other characters and and since uh, characters like at least dark side alone is a very recognizable character that character is mainstream that's the one part of new gods that is very mainstream so in a way dc would have uh, an advantage uh, if they were able to uh, uh, actually make a new gods movie happen which of course with warner brothers you just never know they really don't know what they're doing there so the fact that the two properties travel in the same uh, thematic territory and the fact that the dceu's property would have a little bit more name recognition among the populace that certainly would indicate a, a, a strong benefit in getting to the market first I believe if a Submariner movie came out now, there would be no problem. Namor is a very cool character, has a very rich history, and even though we had already seen this Atlantis thing done with um, uh, Aquaman, I think Namor's cool enough that he would overcome that. It would it, overcome the appearance of just being a knockoff, etc. Um, however, with the New Gods and the Eternals, the fact that DCEU would have a little bit of an advantage there, and the fact that already these are very uh, difficult, uh, uh, you know, you're talking very epic, heady uh, types of stories and characters, gods, you know, if you think even, you know, kind of more heady than Asgard. So, uh, uh, I mean, there's elements of these stories uh, where they're manipulating and controlling and experimenting with humans and other races and such, so it... it kind of it brings that God theme to a, a, a level above uh, what you see in the typical Asgardian stories. Um, like I said, when I read it, read that Iron Man annual number six when I was uh, 11 years old, right over my head. I had no idea what a lot of what I was reading was. So it, it makes sense that you would uh, uh, not always feel the need to race your opponent to the theater. But in this case, I think that really makes uh, sense. And in fact, I think if they brought out an Eternals movie that killed it at the box office before the New Gods came out, I wouldn't be surprised if Warner Brothers canceled their New Gods just because of that. Because them feeling that now they would be looked at as the knockoff. I mean, it shouldn't. Uh, both films should be able to uh, uh, exist independently of each other, and even if they're mining similar territory. But the way Warner Brothers uh, reacts uh, so instinctively, I, uh, I, I, it would not surprise me. So in a way, I think there's a good chance that Kevin Feige sees the Eternals movie project as a new gods killer. You know, they're going to put that movie out and beat DC to the punch again and just leave DC reeling about which direction they go next. We never know. In fact, both movies could come out. Both movies could not come out. However, the fact that we are so close, I don't, I'm surprised I don't see many people pointing this out. We are so close to the next 
unknown MCU movie in 2020. I think it's scheduled for February off the top of my head. That is literally only a, a, a year, 13 months away. So if, I mean, that means something's got to be in production even. So they've really been keeping a, a tight uh, lip on this, I, I'm assuming. And, and I, we'll only know when it comes out. And I don't know, I'm speculating, but I think, you know, if you would ask me six months ago, I would have said, forget it. The Eternals, why would they go to the Eternals? But at this point, I think it's going to happen. You let me know what you think. Is this all craziness? Do you care about the Eternals? Uh, do you even know who they are? Uh, again, I it's a surprising choice for me. I feel like there's so much cool, uh, as far as heroes and villains of the 616 world, that they haven't explored yet, that it kind of bugs me in a way that they're already going to these far fringes of uh, the Marvel Universe, but I know that they want to go and branch out in different directions, so... It, it might make sense. Let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you here next time on Hero Journalism.